Hey there, Michael Bust here, math teacher. Uh, welcome back to my channel as I share uh, video tutorials specifically made for my Math 7 and Pre-Algebra students, but uh, anybody is free to use them. So here we go. Now what I'd like for you to do is on your own work on problems A and B on page 46. Now I suggest you pause the video here, try those two problems out, and when you have a solution, come back and hit the play button, and then I will reveal the answers to you. In lesson 2.5, we're going to solve multi-step equations. So we're going to take all the things that we've kind of uh, started out with solving one-step equations and two-step equations and uh, variables on both sides and now we're gonna kind of synthesize everything to solve multi-step equations here we go so in this problem i've got 15 times the quantity 20 plus d equals 420. now there's a couple of ways that i could do this so one way is that I could distribute the 15 to each of the terms in the parentheses. So we'll do that first, okay? So I'm gonna have 15 times 20. So that should be 300 plus <clears throat> 15 times D which will be a positive 15D, and that's going to equal 420. So once I've distributed the 15 to both of the terms inside the parentheses, I can now subtract 300 from both sides. 300 minus 300 is just going to be 0, so I'm going to have 15D equals 420 minus 300 is going to be 120. Now my next step in this is that I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by the coefficient of d, which is 15. Okay, 15d divided by 15 is just going to be d and then 15 goes into 120. Well, I'm not really sure exactly how many that is, so let's see. So it looks like 120 divided by 15 is 8. Another way that I can solve this problem <clears throat> is that I don't necessarily have to distribute the 15. But what I'm going to do is I'll divide both sides of the equation by 15 to begin the problem, all right? So if I divide by 15, this 15 divided by 15 is just going to be one. <clears throat> so I'll have one times 20 plus two D. So that's just 20 plus D. And then 420 divided by 15 is equal to 28. Now, I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides. 20 minus 20, that's going to be 0. I'll have D equals 28 minus 20 is going to be 8. So notice, both strategies give me a solution of D equals 8. I want you to practice a couple of problems on your own. So on page 154, do problems A and B. Pause the video, work on those problems, and then hit play and see if your answer matches mine. For problem A, I got a solution of x equals negative 20. And in problem B, my solution was a equals 12. Sometimes when we solve equations like this, it's possible that we might not get a solution. 
So we could call that a null set. It's also possible that there's only one solution, and we saw that in the problems that you just did, A and B. X equals negative 20, there's one solution. Hinman B, A equals 12. Once again, there's only one solution. But sometimes we have something called an identity solution, which means we're gonna have infinitely many solutions. So let's see how that works out. So example two on page 155 says, six times the quantity x minus three plus 10 equals two times three x minus four. I'm going to distribute the six to both terms here. So that'll give me 6x minus 18 plus 10 equals, I'm going to distribute the 2 to both terms inside the parentheses. That's going to give me 6x minus 8. Okay. So now I'm going to do some combining of like terms. So that's going to give me 6x minus 8 equals 6x minus 8. <clears throat> All right. Now, if, let's say, I subtract 6x from both sides, that's going to give me negative 8 equals negative 8. Now, this is an identity solution, all right? And the reason that is, is any number that I plug in for x will make this a true statement. I can make x 0. I can make x 10. Every s solution of x will make this a true equation. Now, why don't you try problem C and D on page 155. Uh, as you're working on these, hit pause, come up with a solution, and then hit play and see how your answers uh, compare to mine. In problem C, I get infinitely many solutions. So this is an identity uh, equation. Every value of x will make this a true statement. In D, 10 does not equal 20, so I know that this is a null set. There are no values of x that will make this a true statement. Okay, here's a fun problem. Uh, Hunter bought three snacks and 10 ride tickets at the fair. The ride tickets cost $1.50 less than the snacks. Um, so he spent a total of $24, and we want to find the cost of each snack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up as uh, an equation, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm gonna identify my variable as being S for my snacks, okay? So that's the only variable I'm gonna use, S equals snacks. So I know that he bought three snacks, plus he bought 10 tickets. Now the tickets, were the cost of a snack minus $1.50. And all of that equals $24. I'm gonna use my distributive property here to start solving the problem. And I get 3s plus 10s minus 10 times 1.5 is going to be negative 15, and that's going to equal 24. I'm going to do some combining of like terms. So I get 10s plus 3s. So I get 13s minus 15 equals 24. Now I'm going to add 15 to both sides. My negative 15 plus 15 is just a zero, so I'm gonna have 13s 
equals 39. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 13. 13s divided by 13 is just going to be s. 39 divided by 13 is going to be 3. And so, the cost of my tickets are 3, or sorry, the cost of the snacks are $3 each. If you felt successful working on some of these problems and uh, it made sense following along with what I was doing, um, I'd like for you to work on page 157, problems number 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Um, have these completed by the start of next class so we can organize ourselves into our small groups. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more math tutorial videos. See you next time.